Hi, and thank you for joining me, Joe Onwin, also known as Flojo, on another Power Platform video. Today, we're going to be looking at Power Automate Desktop and how we can get the username from the logged in user on Windows so that we can use it in a file path or something like that. Because more often than not, when you're running automations using robots such as this, you're going to be in a situation where you may need to run it on different machines. Now on different machines, they may have different users logged in and in turn, the file path will need to be dynamically updated with that username. So I'm going to take you through a pro code approach and then I'm going to take you through a low code approach and then we're going to compare the two to see what's faster. And the answer may surprise you. Okay, so let's get started then. On the left hand side here, I've got a um, document in just documents on my user that I've created called work as an example. And I've got an RPA example.txt file. So if I open up this, you can just see it is blank. So I've got this particular file here and I want to update it, but you can see that I've got the user work. So how do I dynamically get this in Power Automate Desktop? Well, we've got two approaches. So we've got the pro code approach and we've got the low code approach. And I've split them out into subflows just so that we can run them uh, both separately and then we can go through what they do and what is, in my opinion, the better version to do. So let's start with the pro code approach, which is, would be this one. So I'm going to enable this action so you can see it here. And let's just jump right in. So firstly, I need to highlight several things. What I'm doing is I'm capturing the start date. So I'm capturing exactly the timestamp of when this runs. I'm running the section. So I'm running these three actions. Then I'm capturing the end time. I'm subtracting the end time from the start time to get the total amount of seconds left and then I'm updating the file as well. Now, this part here is not going to be counted uh, within the actual timestamp. The only thing that's going to be counted is what we're actually doing. Okay, so this is going to be the same on the actions and I'll go through this again when we get to there, um, when we get to the low code approach, but let's take a look at the pro code approach. So the pro code approach uses a PowerShell script. So what you would do is you would create a variable and then you would do dash dash join after the equals because we're assigning this section here to this variable. So we do dash join, we open the parentheses, we then put the initial part as the hard code, so C drive users because that's not going to change. We'll then do a plus sign and then we use the environment variable. Now the environment variable allows you to access all of the Windows environment um, variables that you can have access to, such as username. So we do a colon and then we do a username in all in caps. So we do dollar and dot dot and then in all in capitals uh, username. Very simple, right? Now what that's going to do is that's going to go get the Windows variable, bring back the username from that variable and insert it into here. We then do a plus and then we finish off the location of um, our particular location of our file. Now I'll copy and put, uh, paste this into the description um, so you don't have to worry about trying to note this down. It'll be in the description below in the video. But what you have to do is you have to do write output and then the variable. Now doing the write output and the variable means that only this variable is going to get written to the variable that is produced. So you can name this variable whatever you want, but as long as you do write output and whatever the variable is as the last line, that will then be placed in the variable produced. Now the variable produced is the file path because it's the entire file path with the dynamically changing username. Now when you do this though, and when you get to this point, you're going to get this URL back, this document location back, but you're going to have a problem. 
because it's going to add a line break and a space in it. Now we need to remove all of that stuff. So we have to use an action called trim text. So what you're going to do then is do trim text, the white space characters from the beginning and the end, save um, after uh, passing your file path. And then that's going to give you a nice standard uh, piece of text that you can actually use to write to a file because it will be the exact URL and it won't have any additional spaces um, causing you issues. Then you go to write text to file. You pass through the file path that we've just generated and cleaned. And then I'm just uh, adding some text here showing that it's PowerShell. Okay, so if I hit run now, what this is going to do is it's going to run all of this PowerShell script. It's going to set it to file path. It's going to clean it and overwrite the file path with the new clean one and then write to text. And then it's going to calculate the date. So let's hit run then. Awesome. So this took 1.86 seconds. And if I open up this file, we've got all of that information and then I'm assigning runtime to it at the end. Uh, let's just close these. Um, so now we can see how fast that worked, right? We had to clean it, which added an additional step. And then we got to write directly to the file, but it was really simple in terms of code because it was simply doing a join and getting an environment variable to do that. Okay, so that was the pro code approach. Let's take a look at the low code approach. So in the low code approach, what we've got here is we've got get the current date and time again. We've got the get the current date and time again. So we've got the start and the end. We're doing the subtraction and we're writing exactly the same as we was doing in the pro code approach, except this time we're going to use the action get windows environment variable. So it's doing exactly the same as what our PowerShell was doing. Instead of doing the dollar sign EMV dot dot username, we simply select username and then we're assigning it to the username variable. So straight out of the gate, that is going to have a username variable generated from the environment variable. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set a variable for the entire file path. So to do that, we just simply type uh, the actual location, do the variable, and then add the rest of the location of the file. And that's going to then be our file path. We don't need to trim it or anything like that. But if you look here, you can see that we've got three steps here and we have three steps here. So we still have three actions that we have to perform either way, either in low code or pro code, but they are different actions. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write the text to file. So here we're going to say um, this time dynamically with actions, exactly the same as what we did before. And then we're going to place the time on there. So let's run this then. So as you can see here, it's faster. It's actually faster than going from the pro code approach. Now, why is that? Well, we're not having to go in um, the PowerShell script and assign it to a variable, then produce that variable and pass it out. That may be adding the additional time, um, but we are also trimming it. So we're actually going through the entire text and removing characters. Whereas here, we're just getting it, we're setting the variable and we're writing. So it seems that the low code approach is actually more efficient and faster than the pro code approach. Now is either approach wrong? No, either approach is not wrong, but why would you take the PowerShell approach when you can use an action approach and make your life so much more simpler? And it also allows for anyone that is not familiar with PowerShell to understand exactly and easily what is going on. So obviously this was just a loose test on the timings. I've got, uh, got it open here. You can see that it's about 1.2 seconds 
faster to just go down the action route. Now, if you're doing a lot of these type of things in your flow, you're getting a lot of file locations and that, it could save you considerable time. I mean, even just 10 of those, you're saving 10 seconds on a flow run, right? Now, it is entirely up to you which way you go. I would suggest going down the low code route in this particular um, approach to write into a text file and get in the location of a environment variable because it is simply quicker. And also it has the benefit of being much more easily digestible for individuals that do not know uh, PowerShell scripting. Okay, so that is it. It's very simple. I'm also going to be doing a video on how you can do this like timer because there's not a specific timer to calculate between it and I'll show you more in depth in that but that will be another video on my channel so if you're looking for something like that or looking for more information on how to do that check that video out uh, I'll put all of this code in the uh, description so don't worry about taking notes or anything like that and if you have any comments leave a comment below hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel grow and I really appreciate it if you've made it this far bye <laughs>